Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Thursday, March 19th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here are tonight's top stories. Tonight, how the race war keeps us divided and the Fed's plan to stampede through Texas. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. See, Texas is listed in red as a hostile sector. I told you I'm deep behind enemy lines, folks. I mean, we are listed as a hostile sector. They're having Delta Force, uh, Navy SEALs with the Army trained to basically take over. According to a newly released military document, it looks like the feds are getting ready to invade Texas. This is according to the Jade Helm 1-5. It's a joint military training exercise document. It's going to take place across seven states for eight weeks. And uh, according to this document, it says residents may see an increase in aircraft in the area overnight. There might be a, an increase in suspicious activities, calls and noise disturbances. And uh, joining me in the studio is Joe Biggs. Now, Joe, you actually brought this to the attention of Alex Jones during the radio show today. It, it made it to the Drudge Report within the about, minutes. yes, yeah. I mean, within the hour. Now, obviously, a, a training exercise like this can be really beneficial for our soldiers. So why is this one of such a concern? Well, the thing is, is we keep seeing these small urban warfare training centers, these asymmetric warfare training centers popping up all across the, uh, the country. Uh, Fort AP Hill that David Knight and I went to uh, for about a week or so. Then there's another one in North Carolina that the uh, U.S. Marine Corps is using as well. These are towns that look like urban America, soccer fields, you know, churches, mosques, uh, subway systems, all this stuff. And in the military, you have a, we have a saying, you train how you fight. You train in an area that will be like the theater of operation that you're going to be conducting combat operations in. So that's what makes me scared based off of that type of logic, using the military, you train how you fight, you train in the atmosphere of an area you're gonna be training in. Why is this theater of operation, this training, look like America? And now they're taking this training from these small, you know, uh, tr urban training areas, and now they're moving it in real time to an actual uh, number of locations across the country. That's something that people need to think about. That's something right. that should worry American citizens. Right, and they're taking it off of Federal, federal lands and onto privately owned lands where they're going to now be getting citizens It's going to be in your involved. backyard. Right, and they're saying, you know, letting, uh, working in conjunction now with uh, local law enforcement agencies, obviously going against the Posse Comitatus Act right there with that, but just letting them know, hey, you know, you might have some more people calling in about some suspicious activities, which what does that mean? Do I need to be concerned that there's going to be someone in fatigues with a sniper rifle outside my window, just training for- well, one, of the, one of the things that really caught my eye when I was looking over the document, it says, be aware of increased aircraft activity at night. Mm -hmm. And that's something I'm gonna touch on more in depth later in a special report that's gonna be coming up. But what you have to understand is, is me being a former vet myself, I've been in Iraq and Afghanistan, I've worked with special operations, Green Berets, you know, Rangers, all the different uh, SOCOM uh, uh, people that they have. And at nighttime, they go out in helicopters and they do raids. That's why it's concerning for me, because this is a snatch and grab mentality. This is what I think is going to happen. These guys are going to be doing operations in these towns via helicopters at nighttime, propelling down, going to people's homes. You know, you throw a bag over their head and you take them off. This is going to get the military pre uh, prepared and trained and ready to start throwing citizens in FEMA camps. And this is something we have to be concerned about. And it's something that we're going to cover. And we're going to look at very closely to make sure that it's not stepping out of the boundaries of what it should be, just innocent training. Mm -hmm. Because when I read this document, it gives me goosebumps. It pisses me off, quite frankly, as a vet. Right. And you also point out how there, there's like 1,500 of these uh, agents are going to be, I mean, it's like all of the special forces. Yeah, it's Navy SEALs, Army Green Berets, Delta Force. You've got Air Force Commandos. You've got the U.S. Uh, Marine Corps Special Operations Group the uh, U.S. Marine Expeditionary Fighting Forces, and also you have the 82nd Airborne, which is a unit that I used to be a part of as well, that's going to be conducting these exercises. And yeah, it's around 1,200 troops. But the, the main thing that we showed earlier was the map, how they have Texas labeled as red, how they have Utah labeled as red. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go look at the legend in that map, it shows you that these are hostile areas. Now, why would they label Texas and Utah, Utah hostile um, in this training exercise? I think one of the main reasons is 
There's a lot of military forces, or a lot of military troops, I should say, that come out of Utah and Texas and Ohio and all these other, uh, these other states. And we've heard time and time again that the, the government comes out and say that returning vets are the number one threat. And this is why I think this is very concerning that they have Texas labels that we have a lot of pro-gun, a lot of pro-constitutionals, mm -hmm. a lot of patriots who live in these areas. And I think that's why they've chosen this, because they're afraid that Texas could break away in a civil war against the United States and there'd be an uprising. And what they're doing is they're calling this unconventional warfare training. Mm -hmm. Now, unconventional warfare training is, by definition right here, our uh, warfare activities consist of uh, activities conducted to go after a resistance movement or insurgency. Mm. But you have to focus on the resistance movement part because the patriot movement that's been going on, this liberty movement, has kind of kicked into full gear lately. Mm -hmm. And I think the government sees that. They know a lot of people are waking up fast and they're trying to do the training they can to get ready for an uprise if it does happen. Absolutely, and that it, it falls in line with a lot of other uh, training manuals that we've seen. We reported on the civil disturbance operations that was a leaked uh, military police training manual. It came out in 2012. They were uh, in that soldiers would be ordered to confiscate firearms, kill American dissidents, Prisoners would be detained in temporary internment camps and re-educated to gain a new appreciation of U.S. policies. Of course, the the newly implemented U.S. policies after you know martial law is put in place and there's a whole new set of rules. And so, tell us a little bit. I mean, obviously, we know this is what you're going to be doing a really in-depth report coming up, but you've got even more coming up after the show as well. Well, yeah. Well, one of the cool things at the end of this video, we're going to air never before seen footage of Obama Deception 2 talking about these, you know, government run psyops in other countries that are now going to be operating domestically here in America. So this is something that it's going to be very eye opening for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But this stuff's been happening in little sections throughout the past few years. Right. You know, we saw the uprising in Ferguson. We saw how they brought out that militarized police group and they controlled people. It was almost like a psychological operation on how that happened. And then we went out and exposed the Fort AP Hill. And then you have these tanks that are showing up at like Spokane, Washington, and the people's reaction to not liking that whatsoever. And then within the next year, California is supposed to be getting this large MRAP that I call the tank ambulance. And they think just because it's gonna have a red cross painted on the side that there's not gonna be an uprise in the community. Right. So this stuff is happening piece by piece. But this right here, this operation, this Jade Helm 1-5, it, it, it gives me goosebumps, and it's something that I think people need to be very upset about. They need to research it themselves. Don't just listen to what we're saying. Go out here. Go to the website. You can find it yourself. Read about it. Educate yourself. And stay tuned for more reports on this because we're going to be covering this because when the time comes, when this operation starts, I'm going to camp out out there. I'm going to be out there in the woods every day filming, recording, and finding out what is going on. Right, and I just think it's it's insane that they would think that our patriots would turn against their own American people, and they're going to train them, and it, I mean, it might just be a huge psyop on the military, but... Well, one of the funny, the, the, the things that they said in the document is, like, they said that this operation will be conducted in Texas because Texans support military operations. Yeah, we support military operations in a combat scenario against a bad guy. Right. Why is our military training to conduct operations against American citizens? Right. Because why else would they be training here? Texas does not look like Iraq or Afghanistan. Right. I've been there. I've seen that. So this area, this is complete and total psyop. This is training. They're trying to get the citizens in the area used to military operations being conducted in and around them, getting that one-on-one -on -one experience, seeing soldiers with an assault rifle around them, the helicopters flying overhead, the tanks coming in, the MRAPs, so they can desensitize people to that. So when it does happen, it, they think it'll make a smoother transition. Mm. But I guarantee you right now, people in Texas aren't going to stand for something like this. Absolutely not. And I think we really are being geared up for some sort of civil unrest. And it's just like William Binney, NSA whistleblower, uh, William Binney said yesterday, you know, that it's we are now working with a government who has a country and not the other way around. I mean, they're trying to force vaccinations on people. They're trying to take our guns. They're trying to ban the yeah. ammo. So essentially, if they can't ban the guns, if they ban the ammo, then your weapon is, you know, exactly. essentially not, you know, it's just a paperweight. Right. So they're trying everything they can on all fronts to attack us, to attack our rights, to take our liberties. And this is something that people got to be pissed off about. And we've got to do something. Absolutely. Well, we're looking forward to your report. Thank you. All right. Well, coming up, stick around because we are going to talk about race and specifically how not to talk about race.
the knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com Oil of Oregano Formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market. Sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 well this week it is south by southwest here in austin austin is on a world stage so it's a great place for people with an agenda to get their message out there and that's why i think this story that's coming out of austin this week is a little bit suspect now what we're dealing with someone is posting racist stickers on businesses in east austin uh, these stickers say that the businesses are exclusively for white people. They go on to say a bunch of other, you know, really abhor abhorrent things, but these are on six East Austin businesses. And in, in addition to these disparaging words, the stickers are using the city's logo. So this gives the impression that they represent the city of Austin and that the city of Austin has some program in place to segregate businesses. Now, obviously, the mayor is not amused. These business owners are not amused. And Texas State Rep Donna Dukes, as well, has chimed in. Now, er, initially on her own Facebook page earlier today, she said, some jokes just are not funny. If this is even a joke at all, it's tasteless. And she suggested that if the shops themselves were involved, they need to be put out of business. So actually calling on people to boycott these businesses Meanwhile, the business owners had no idea that these stickers were placed on the outside of their business. The stickers were incredibly professional looking. They weren't just someone putting up graffiti or something like that. They were really well done. So I wouldn't be surprised if George Soros paid for these stickers. Now, Donna Dukes also went on to say that she's really concerned that these stickers could have been placed there to cause racial tension. You think? This area where these stickers were placed is a, a rapidly gentrifying part of Austin. So we're already kind of dealing with a lot of racial tension in some of these areas that are being gentrified. But this is clearly not a business owner putting this on their business. And frankly, I don't think it's a racist white person who would put these stickers on these businesses. This is probably more so created by someone who is upset with all the gentrification happening in that neighborhood. Do you think this is the best way to draw attention to a rapidly gentrifying neighborhood? Uh, you know, right now we're hearing all about getting a conversation about race started. This, however, is even more awkward and negative than Starbucks, who's trying to get their baristas to have conversations about race with their customers. Um, obviously, that has been getting a lot of backlash online because it's just awkward. I don't, I don't want to you know, white privilege latte at Starbucks. I don't need a lecture when I'm going to get my coffee. And this whole sticker thing is, it's very negative. It's basically kind of saying, 
you're racist. And I say that you're racist, and now you need to prove that you're not. Uh, similar to the Black Lives Matter protesters, once again, they are targeting white people at brunch. Again, I just don't understand this. Now, the, this particular group compelled these people who were just sitting there eating brunch to awkwardly raise their hands and show their support for Michael Brown, which why is he the poster child of this movement? Hands up, don't shoot was a lie. Why are you targeting white people at brunch? I do not understand. That's the thing. It's like anyone says anything about Obama, you're immediately labeled a racist. And then you have to prove that, well, no, you're not racist. And so that's how this whole new movement is going is to just throw that word out there. And then it's up to you to prove that you are not racist, but you can't because you know, if you're white, then you are. It's kind of like, if you have a penis, then you're sexist. It's just, it is what it is. Now, last week, Obama joked about being Kenyan, but earlier, Charlie Sheen tweeted basically the same thing, um, and he was attacked. He was called a racist. So Sheen criticized Obama for spending more time on the NCAA bracket picks instead of attending funerals of dead U.S. soldiers. A lot of people were really upset about that. And I mean, the president has done that quite quite a few times. You know, he, he talks about someone being beheaded and then he goes off and plays a round of golf. So in this particular tweet, Charlie uh, Sheen called him Barry Satoru Kenya. Now, that's not racist. That is, oh, I mean, what's the most offensive about that tweet is Charlie Sheen's spelling is abuse of the English language. That is what was so offensive to me. But the fact that he called him Barry Satoru Kenya, those are facts. President Barack Obama used to be known as Barry Satoru when he was growing up in Indonesia. And we all know that he has a Kenyan background. It doesn't, you don't have to buy into the whole birther thing or any of that. Those are facts. But if you wanna state facts, you're a racist. So obviously labeling everything racist or sexist isn't gonna win anything at the end of the day. You're gonna, in fact, turn a lot of people off from your movement, which is exactly what we saw happening uh, in Ferguson. The entire country was there in support of these protesters. The entire country was appalled at the militarized police and the way they were treating these protesters. And then immediately you saw the race baiters swoop in and they changed the whole narrative of this movement. And then so it started to marginalize people who are our allies of the black community. And so obviously it's not everyone, it's not all the protesters, but you have these certain groups who are claiming to represent the black community and they are fomenting anger and divisiveness. Now coming up at the end of the show, I'm gonna air the full interview uh, that I did with the Huey Newton Gun Club, it took place during South by Southwest this week. You saw the other video, it's gotten nearly 100,000 hits at this point. Uh, it was basically just this group chanting about killing cops. Obviously very sensational, very sensational chanting. People were just outraged. I mean, here they are allowed to peaceably protest because of their First Amendment rights and they're chanting about killing cops. Now, when I first was interviewing the spokesperson for this uh, Huey E. Newton gun club, you know, I was agreeing with a lot of th the things that he was saying, talking about the Second Amendment, how black people have the right to defend themselves, they have the right to bear arms, and that's absolutely true. But then they go and give this very divisive message, this divisive chant about killing cops. So I want you to watch that because it's just another example of where your words and your actions are not matching up and you are dividing the country rather than joining the liberty movement. We're for you, we want you to exercise your second amendment. You do have the right to protect yourself. You do have a right to, you know, to be a part of, of what this is we're trying to do here. You know, you are America, but that's, that's what this is all about is dividing us because we know if we all join hands and we rise together, we're gonna be unstoppable. And when they saw that starting to happen with Ferguson, they were like, we can't let that happen. We need to divide these people once again. Now, let me not to mention the fact that millions of white people voted for the first black president. Okay, so the country seemed to be a little bit better you know, racial lines before the president came in office. Now things have really gone off the rails. One thing Obama is saying that can dramatically improve the country is mandatory voting. 
Now, he says that it would be transformative if everybody voted, saying that it could counteract those big campaign contributions. He went on to laud countries like Australia, which already have compulsory voting, and citizens there, if they fail to vote, they can be fined or even jailed if they don't vote. So this is what they're saying. We just need to make these mandatory. Uh, forcing people to vote, obviously, is not democratic at all. It is authoritarian. Now, um, in this article, they point out how mandatory voting would work out, of course, for all of those newly licensed people in the country and, of course, those who really don't have any idea about politics, but they can be swayed to vote for people simply because of the color of their skin. Now, I spoke with some folks out at South by Southwest, talked to them about, you know, this voting, as well as, you know, what do they think about the president running for a third term? You might be surprised about what some of them said. Hillary has kind of been doing such a bad job. The Democrats don't really have anybody, and Obama is toying with the idea of running for a third term. We want to put out a video that tells him to do it. I already voted for you last year, so I'll vote for you again next time, too. Or no, not last year, but last term. Obama, you should run for a third term because we need you. Obama's third term? No. Are you guys lining up to vote for Obama's third term? Is that why everyone's here in line? We need Obama to run for the third term. So I want the whole country to vote for Obama. Are you here voting for Obama's third term? Yes, of course. I honestly think, why not? Obama's the first black president. Why might I be the first person in history to go three terms? See, I don't give a about Obama. I, I think Obama is going to give it a shot, but it's still pretty he. important. I'm going to go with he's not going to get this one done. Obama to run for a third term? No. Oh, oh, oh. You forget what state you're in. I don't, I don't hate it. It sounds all right to me, but uh, I'm all America, so that's all that matters. Well, if you love America, then you know the Constitution has a 22nd Amendment, and he can't run for a third term, even though he wants to. I don't care, but I didn't know he wanted to run. I'd say he's, he did a good job, but I just don't think we need to have a president in office. Um, you know, if we were to limit to, like, four terms, that wouldn't be too bad. Third term. Make it happen. Boom. Boom. Obama, run for a third term. We, we really don't want him to, so... Do I think he can make it happen? Yes. Do we care about the amendments? Or the Constitution? I do. I get it. I don't, I don't think it's an option, so I, I think we're okay. Obama, third term! It's for the kids! It's for us! No, I do not want that man for a third term. Our government can go ahead and burn itself down before I do. Are you gonna vote for Hillary? I ain't voting for any of them. That woman doesn't need to run either. Are you gonna vote for Bush? I ain't voting for none of them. You can't do that. Why? You can only do two terms. We just gotta do away with that pesky 22nd Amendment? Don't think so. Yeah? No. One more year? Can't do that. Uh, sorry, I'm pro-America. There's a reason that Hillary Clinton is not up for this in charge of the United States. <laughs> he has signed a lot of executive orders, and this is something that he thinks that it, it could be fun to kind of mess around with the amendments, and people want him to run for a third term. The Democrats have no one. That may be the case, but, you know, the Constitution's kind of important. If you don't vote for Obama for a third term, you're voting for Bush or Hillary, so. Well, like, like a different Bush? Uh... Yeah. Oh. Baby brother book. Sounds like a triple lose situation to me. <laughs> Another major health threat. This one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must-have for every modern, independently-minded house household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro One G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-888-253-3139. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. 
but no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life. It's stimulating, mind-expanding, safer to use than alcohol. It's the in thing. Such are the myths concerning marijuana. Myths that lull thousands of young people into experimenting with a noxious weed. Marijuana, the burning weed with its roots in hell. Should marijuana be legalized? We'll debate the pros and cons right now. Marijuana leads to doing worse things. That's just a fact. I don't care what anybody says. The drug war is a total failure, and the federal drug war ought to be re revisited and for the most part gotten rid of. This has corrupted our government. It has destroyed our due process, and it is withholding from people medicine that is very effective, and we need to stop it. We need to roll prohibition back right now. Marijuana is natural. You know, there's so many different things that you can use it for. Uh, including, you know, helping cancer patients. I'm a Christian minister, yeah, and I believe, you know, Jesus would be okay with it. There have been studies proven that children who have 400 seizures a day, that's intense, that's like, that's like a seizure a minute, who can't stop just violently convulsing, have been helped and have stopped having seizures up like after two to two, three days after applying the cannabinoid oil treatment to themselves, like in their food or something like that. Like, that's incredible. There's proof of that. Like, it's all over the internet. The mandatory minimums locking people up for nonviolent crimes for very long periods of time where there's no discretion for the fact that they were nonviolent, that this is their first offense. No, just lock them up. You two-bit heroes <laughs> making life miserable for innocent children. Why don't you go out and hunt real criminals? We got a tip on this drag race. But when we found the marijuana, well, sir, that's a very serious charge. Think about the tens of billions of dollars that Big Pharma makes a year, with close to 20% of the population being on antidepressants when every major study shows that marijuana absolutely destroys depression in people and Prozac can't even prove that it has any measurable positive effect and they have to put on the insert that it may make you commit suicide. Things like alcohol kill people daily um, and it's legal because it can be taxed. Happy to deliver alcohol. But weed is illegal, right? Hey, bud, <laughs> let's party. <laughs> that the pharmaceutical companies should stay away. Like, just keep it natural. Let's have the sun out, you know, like, grow some seeds in the dirt. You know, like, just stay away, you know, let it be. You know, like, let it grow organically, and, like, that's that's what will help people. It should definitely should not be legal because that's helping us make money on the streets. And prohibition. That's right. Peace. What's the obstacle? What what the hell is stopping it? What, what Why is Texas taking so long? Because we're in Texas, dude. They haven't Texas. figured out how to make money off of it yet. They're, no, they're they, looking they, at all they, the benefits there, from other states. They're so fucking right-wing. They, they, they don't care about the health benefits. They know that we're making so much money off the cancer and whatnot. They want us to be unhealthy. There's so many benefits for something that's natural. We need to look more into natural medicines and not things that are scientifically made in a lab. This is not reefer madness. This is one big industry that has political clout trying to shut down another industry that basically has uh, a, a product that grows freely and is not owned by anybody. I don't want the government regulating my marijuana. Okay, but right now they're regulating you. They'll arrest you if you smoke it. That's, That's regulation. True, but only if I get caught. Look at what the pharmaceutical companies are doing. They want to take away our informed consent and violate the Nuremberg Code, saying that they can inject us with whatever they deem to be necessary at any given time. We should be very, 
very concerned about this. I didn't know you were a weed head, Tony. <sighs> All my friends are. Thank you for watching the show tonight. Now, if you are watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, and you can also become a subscriber to Prison Planet TV. Your username and password can be shared with up to 20 people at the same time. And of course, you're getting years worth of content that you'll never find on YouTube. That's the benefit of that. Obviously, you're also helping us. Uh, you're supporting this operation so we can continue to bring you all the news you need to fight the info war. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you here tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. I saw the Infowars on feminism when Cytheria got gang raped okay. and I was really upset about that. They were talking about how like uh, like Anita Scarzizia, like she hasn't commented on it at all and I'm like, yeah, her focus is really like Gamergate, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but it's still part of like the bigger picture as a whole right. and like it was kind of upsetting. And I'm just kind of like, hey, why didn't we talk about that? Like, why is there a big st a stigma around sex workers? Okay, so and why did I find out about it through, like, sites like Chicks on the Right? Like, that was really surprising. And I don't like that it's, like, been used to further perpetuate this, like, this negative connotation on the idea of what feminism is, which is, like, equality. You have the feminists who think, uh, you know, they see the Sports Illustrated swimsuit cover, they think it's a great celebration of women's bodies, uh, fitness, and all that, and then you also have the other ones, or at least another type of feminist, that they call themselves, saying that it's objectifying and it's horrible and it's all these other things. Yeah, you know, I think there's something to be said about that. Um, as a feminist, like, like I identify it like I don't think it's my personal Whoa. responsibility to tell someone else who they should be and what they should do, and I really think it's defeating the purpose when we go around pointing out who's more feminist than the other person and like who's more like liberal or who's more you know right wing or whatever like they just your guys are forgetting like the idea which is like it's supposed to be a quality and it's a humanist issue because it's yes America has pretty we're pretty free as far as females go but there are people around the world little girls that get like sold into a marriage like they're seven years old and then like you look at little boys like the Quran talks about betting little boys it's like a common practice you know that's up <laughs> I don't I'm not down with child trafficking <laughs> right and yeah, we talk about that stuff too we talk about uh, the rape and mutilation of women in the Middle East yeah. Saudi Arabian women yeah, being no, called terrorists for be, being able to drive back to like cosmopolitan cosmopolitan represents a time right now where like we're in a transitional period as a country you know women haven't had rights for very long and we're still in that transitional it's not Star Trek where like everybody's cool talking about Gamergate can you explain that to me um well as far as as my understanding is that like Anita Scarzizian has started a conversation which is um, there is sexual objectification of women in video games. Okay. And you know, it, it anatomically doesn't make sense for a female warrior to have giant breasts. Like, you know, that's the deal. And I can I can understand that. Um, but at the same time, it's like, you know, it's a freedom of expression as far as video games go. 
Um, and I do think that there needs to be more like positive video games for women because you know it's not always about clothes and it's really discouraging I think for little girls to just be constantly bombarded with you know take care of a baby doll take care of your clothes well, what about what about characters like, like Metroid characters like Metroid yeah like we need more strong female like characters basically from my understanding what you're saying is Gamergate was pretty much a way to get more positive female characters in video games? No, Gamergate, um, they they have a big issue because I, as to my understanding, like she started a conversation about sexual objectification in women um, and there was a backlash from the men of Gamergate and like other video games, they had a big problem with it. They didn't like what she was starting um, and then they decided to put her information out to the world, her private, personal information. Okay, so that's where the gate yeah. came in. Okay. Yeah, well, and, and like, you know, as a person, like if you were somebody and you just like wanted to talk about something on YouTube and like have start a conversation about something, and then to have someone hack into your personal stuff and then put your information out there and then experience death threats on a 24-7 basis. Like she couldn't give a speech in a college because somebody said that they would there would be a shooting worse than Kent State. That's that's scary. That's fucked up. Like Okay, so so that's what it was. It wasn't so much what she was saying, it's like how people reacted to it. Yeah, yeah. Like it's not so much like, you know, she, I don't think she's like campaigning to like, you know come down on men she's just asking hey can you really think about how you're treating me as a human being used since before the days of the roman empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health introducing the new infowarslife.com oil of oregano formulation a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health we have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 Ian McAdoo reporting for Infowars.com. I'm out here at South by Southwest, and we just saw some tweets on Twitter. People were saying that the Black Panthers are out here doing an open carry march. Uh, so obviously, we got to go try and find these guys, and of course, see what the people out here at South by Southwest think about a bunch of guns in their face. Marching down the avenue. Twenty more big and we'll be through. They started the war. A lot of people like to say, this might start a race war. But we would like to say, the race war started when he bust the first black man upside the head in Africa and drug us over here in chain. Who is the real criminal? Who is the real gangbanger? When they can drag our people. Bust them upside the head, make them pick cotton, and build this country. Please, tell us your manifesto. Okay. So, uh, extension of what we're doing here, this is the Huey P. Newton Gun Club, and we're just uh, demonstrating, uh, number one, our gun rights, and number two, we're taking a position against police brutality, which we say is a euphemism for police terrorism. Okay. So what do you want to say to people who think that open carry and things like this is promoting violence? Uh, there's nothing violent about uh, bearing arms. There's not anything doing violent. In fact, over 99% of America um, bears arms. And so uh, that's not anything violent. The fact that we're telling people that they do have rights, there's nothing violent about that. They're just simply educating them about the rights that they do have. Mm -hmm. And what's been the response from all the people out here, probably a global audience, seeing, witnessing this happening, which is incredible, what's been the response? 
Uh, essentially, the people have been very supportive. Um, we've been allowed to educate the people. Um, and so that's our first and foremost position, is make sure people understand what and why we're doing what we're doing. And today's demonstration was all about dealing with the issues of our police brutality, which we say is euphemism for police terrorism. Yeah, we go again. Same old again. Marching down the avenue. Marching down the avenue. 20 more beats that will be through. Oi, boy, bang, bang. Oi, boy, bang, bang. Oi, boy, bang, bang. Black Paul. Black Paul. Black Paul. Black Paul. Black Paul. Black Paul. This is not a game. This is not a joke. And when you get up off your knees and you find that it's a cracker with a pen in their hand, still controlling your destiny, guess what? You still got a problem. We haven't, we haven't joined Open Carry Texas, and primarily the reason is because they, their issue is primarily dealing with gun rights, whereas our issue is a little bit different. We're, we're taking a position against police brutality. I think we favor some gun rights, and we do have some connections with that, but our primary position against police brutality, fratricide, is an issue that exists uh, specifically in the black and brown poor communities. And please forgive me, are you guys Black Panthers or the new Black Panthers? No, we're the Huey P. Newton Gun Club. Thank you yes, very much. Can you say that again, just saying, make sure? Huey. P. Newton, who was the founder of the Black Panther Party, Huey P. Newton Gun Club. Awesome. Telling us to go protest peacefully. When 9 11 happened, you didn't say nothing about no damn peace. When the Revolutionary War was taking place, I didn't hear nothing about no peace. In nature, everything has a defense mechanism. You cannot survive without one. So the nature has been stripped out of our people. Beat with a whip. Oi, boy, bang, bang. Oi, boy, bang, bang. Oi, boy, bang, bang. bang. Oh, Don't you speak, speak that's what I said. Don't you speak, you speak that's what I said. Don't you speak, you speak that's what I said. Did you guys see the Black Panther march coming through this way? With the open carry rally? What do you guys think about that? Do you think that's setting the right tone? What do you think? I know what I think, but are you guys, I mean, do you appreciate some of the messages there or? I know you guys are okay with the open carry. They, I mean, I, you We're are. We're just here to keep everybody safe. Keep, that's yes. That's all we do. Do you we feel like no that, opinions. do you feel, feel like that further divides the, the, the people against the police and what the job that you all do to protect? No. Yes. I don't know. No. No comment. Nobody seems divided. <laughs> Because the guy was telling me we're not we're not um, here to promote violence and whatever, but then they were like, oh my god, bang bang, and I was like, oh wow, that's not actually what you were just telling me. <laughs> you know, they were they were following all the rules. They were stayed on the sidewalk. They actually went when when it was you know the the walk. So you know, right now they're abiding by the rules. So the white man loves to throw a rock and then hide his bloody hand. We must remember this. Are y'all with me? Yes, yes, sir. Sir. I don't hear you. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What do you think that this effect, that this is going to have to make people join your cause? Or, you know, what do you think this will do? We hope that they would join our cause and, and at the very least be very supportive of our cause. And like I said, our, our primary concern is to educate the people. First and foremost, we're not out here promoting violence or anything of that nature. However, we think that we do have a right to bear arms. We're going to, we're going to bear arms. We're going to do, uh, have our constitutional right, and we're going to educate people about police brutality, which we say, again, is a euphemism for police terrorism. We are here to let everybody know in this country we will not sit back on our hands passfully, peacefully. We will defend ourselves by any means necessary.
You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.